Hi, this is Tom Does Tech. I'm Tom, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to become a master of using TypeScript in your React projects. So who is this guide for? This guide is for anyone that is familiar with using React and TypeScript. You don't have to be an expert in either, but this shouldn't be your first time using either of these two technologies. So what will I get if I watch to the end of the video? You'll get a better understanding of TypeScript. You'll have a better understanding of React and you'll have the confidence to start using TypeScript in your React projects. So these are some generators you can use to bootstrap React projects with TypeScript. In this video, we're going to be using Vite. You can also create a Next project, a Create React App project, Meteor, Ignite, and you can also use TSDX. So the format of the video will be, we'll have a look at component inputs first, and then we'll take a look at hooks, Next, we'll take a look at network requests. And finally, we'll have a look at how to use React's context API. So let's dive in and get started. I'm here in VS Code and I'm going to use Vite to bootstrap my React application. And I'm going to use the React TS template. And I'm going to rename my application to React TypeScript. Once Vite has finished bootstrapping the application, I'm just going to CD into my project folder and I'm going to open it up in a new VS Code window. So I'm going to rename app.tsx to one types.tsx and this will include our basic types examples. And I'll do this with all the sections of this video and I'll post this repository to GitHub and so you can look in the repository as reference for when you're working in your own project. So I'm just going to remove the body of this function here and I'm going to remove all this. So the first example will be a basic component that will just take two strings as arguments and we're going to type those two strings. So I'm going to say function, a child component, and this is just a normal React component. And in here we're going to have a title and we're going to have a body. I'm going to return a fragment and in the fragment I'm just going to have a h1 and this has our title and then I'm going to have a p tag and this is just going to include our body and let's render out the child component down the bottom here and we can pass in a title And you can see here that we're getting some type errors. So binding an element type has an implicit type of any, and that will be the same for body. So there's two ways we can fix this. The first way we can fix this is to create an interface. And we can assign the interface to this object here. And we can say we expect a title. And this is going to be a string. And we can do the same with body. It's going to be a string. And this works here. And you can see if we remove our props from down the bottom here, we should get some helpful hints here. So we'll put our title back. The second way that we can type this is without an interface. So we can take the body of the interface here and we can replace the interface reference with the body of the interface. So this is okay if you have a couple of inputs and you don't want to use the interface again, but it's generally a bit nicer to use our interface instead of putting the props directly onto the function. So something that's really common in React is to pass in children. So we can pass children into this function here. And we can say this is the child element and we can pass our children up here and let's render out our children down below. And we'll just wrap our children in a div. And you can see here that TypeScript is complaining because children isn't on our interface. So there's a few ways to type children. You could just say children any, and this works, but it's not very nice. So the one correct way to do this is to say react dot react node. So you'll see in React, there's a few suggestions here, React child, React children, React component element, but the correct answer is React node. 
Another really common practice is to create generic components. So you'll often see in libraries, we'll have a component called box and box will take a lot of different properties. And if you've ever wondered how they get the types on those properties, I'm going to show you how they do that. So our box is going to take children and we're going to return a div and we're going to pass our children in. We can make a new interface called box props and we can type our children and we know how to type children now. It's react.react node and we need to put our box props onto box. So let's render out our box down below. We'll say this is the box children. But what happens if we want to add some styles to this box? So we want to display equals flex, for example. We don't want to have to type every single style property that can go into box. And luckily we don't have to. So React comes with a interface called CSS properties. So our box is going to expect box props and react.css properties. And now we can say on our div, we're going to say style equals, and we need to get everything except for the children. And so we can destructure our input object with rest, but it's probably more appropriate to call this styles. And we can pass in our styles down here. So let's start our dev server and have a look at how these styles affect this div element. So you can see up the top here, we have this is our box children, and we can inspect that. And you can see the div has an inline style attribute with our display flex. So let's add a new property and we'll say background. And you can see here, we get all sorts of style inputs that we can use. So we'll say background color equals red. And you can see here, we get another inline style with our background color. So what happens if we have a generic component like a button and we want to accept any attribute that a button would accept? We can say function button. Again, a button is going to take children. And this time let's put our types in line. So we'll say children is react.react .react node. And we can render out our button with the children. And let's go put our button down the low here. So we want our button to take children and any attribute that a button element should take. So we can add an and symbol here to extend our types. So we can say react.buttonHTML attributes, and this is a generic that takes a HTML button element. So if we go back down to our button, we should see an on click handler appear, and we should see on blur, on blur capture, on double click, on double click capture. So what happens if we want to accept all the attributes that a button will take and some style attributes? Well, that's no problem. We can combine these two here. So first let's take our attributes. So we'll spread our props here and we'll call this rest. And we're going to spread the props onto the button. So they actually affect the button. And we're going to extend our props here with react.css properties. And now a HTML button attributes and CSS properties will be put into rest and they'll be applied to the button. So let's add a background color equals blue. And we should expect our button to turn blue. So you can see that our button hasn't turned blue and we have a property on here called background color equals blue. And if we have a look in the console, it will tell us that React does not recognize background color on the DOM. So the easiest way to change this is to change our input props for styles. And so we're going to say, and, and we're going to pass in an object here and we're just going to say styles and our styles are going to be equal to react.css props. So now after children, we can say styles. 
And then on our button, we can say style equals styles. Now, if we come back down to our button, you will notice that background color is no longer valid. So we can say style equals, and we can pass in an object here, and we can pass in our background color. And our button now turns blue. So the next thing to look at is hooks. So I'm going to create a new file here called number two, and I'm going to say hooks.tsx. So inside main.tsx, I'm going to change app to types, and I'm going to render it down here, but I'm going to render the new component called hooks instead. So the hooks that I'm going to show you in this video are going to be use state, use ref, and use reducer. So if you're already familiar with how to use these hooks, that's great. I'm going to show you how to use them properly with TypeScript. So to show you this, I'm going to create a small to-do app, and I have some styles already set in the app.css. So the first thing we're going to do is to create an app, and I'm going to export app as default. I'm going to return a new div, and the class name is just going to be app. And I'm going to create a new state item, and the state is just going to default to an empty array. And I'm going to say items and set items. And I'm going to create an unordered list. And inside the unordered list, I'm going to say items.map. And I'm going to call my item item. And I'm going to return a list item with a span. And the span is just going to have item.text and a button. And the button is just going to have an X and an onClick handler. And my onClick handler is going to call a function called remove. And this is going to take one argument, and the argument is going to be item.id. So you can see here that we've already got some errors. Firstly, item.text does not exist on our item. So let's fix this. Let's create a new interface and we'll call this to do. And to do is going to have text, which is going to be a string. And it's also going to have an ID, which is going to be a number. And so let's type use state as a to do. So there's a few ways that you can do this, but I find the easiest is to pass our to do item into use states generic. And so if you hover over it, you can see that it is an array of never. And if we remove this array and we hover over it again, you can see that it's going to be undefined. So we can pass in our to-do item here, and then it's going to be an array of to-dos. And we have an error here because we need to import React. And I believe if you're using React 17, you don't need to do that. So our remove function here is not defined, so let's quickly define that. And you can see here that we get an error. It expects zero argument, but we got one. So let's pass in one argument here. And so we can say this is going to be a number. And because item.id is a number, this will work. However, we can also do to do, and we can find the ID of to do. So we can say ID, and we can say to do, and this is going to be the ID. And this just tells other developers what exactly ID is and what you mean when you say ID. So let's just console log ID for now. And let's create a new function up the top here. And this is going to be another component for adding an item. So we'll say add item. And we're going to return a div. And our div is going to have a class name equal to add to do. We're going to have an input, and the input's going to have a placeholder, and the placeholder is just going to be what do you need to do. And then we're going to have a button, and when the button is clicked, it's going to add a new to do item to the list. So when we click this button, we want to get the value of input. 
So add item is going to take one property and this is going to be handle click. And because we take a property here, let's create an interface. So we'll call this interface add item props. And we'll use the interface down here. And we'll type handle click. So handle click is going to be a function. So we can type our function like this and it's going to return nothing. So it was going to return void and it's going to take one argument and that argument is going to be text and that's going to be of type string. But more specifically, it's going to be of type to do text. So let's create a reference here. So we'll say const input ref is equal to use ref. And ref is going to default to null. And we're going to pass our input ref onto input. So we can say ref equals input ref. So we're going to type use ref pretty much the same as we typed use state. So we're going to pass a property into the generic. And that property is going to be HTML input element. So let's add some text to our button. And we're just going to say add to do. And then pass an on click handler into here. And this is going to be a new function. And we're going to say if input ref dot current and input ref dot current dot value. Then we're going to call handle click and handle click is going to take input ref dot current dot value. And when the user clicks handle click, we also want to set the input back to an empty string. So we can say input ref dot current dot value is equal to an empty string. So let's go render our handle click below our list of items. Sorry, our add item below our list of items. And it takes one property here and this is handle click. So let's create our handle click function up here. And we know this is going to take our text, which is a type to do and type text. So let's implement our add item and remove item functions. And this should not be called add item, it should be called handle click. So when we handle click, we want to set our items equal to our current list of items plus our new item. So let's return set items and we're going to pass in a new array and we're going to spread our current list of items. Then we're going to pass in a new object and the text is going to be text and we're going to set the ID equal to items dot length plus one. So let's also render a string up the top here that just says you have an account of the items to do's. So you can see you have zero to do's and we'll add a new to do here. So we'll say finish react and type script video add to do. And you can see we have a to do here. So let's remove this to do and you can see it does nothing. And this is because we haven't implemented our remove function. But you can see we also have an error here. We need the key property. So let's add a key to list item. This is going to be item dot ID. So to implement our remove function, we're going to return that items and we're going to return a new array and we're going to spread items and we're going to filter our items. And we're going to say item, item dot ID is not equal to ID. And we can remove this console log here. And the ID that we're setting at the moment is wrong. We're using set items where it should be item. And so we can add a new to do item and we should be able to remove each item. So the next hook to show is use reducer. So I'm going to declare a new variable by saying const and it's going to return an array just like use state. It's going to be equal to use reducer. And use reducer is going to take two arguments. One is a reducer function 
and the second argument is the initial state. And this is going to return our state and a dispatch function. And if you're familiar with Redux, this will look very familiar. So let's define this reducer function. So I'm going to say function reducer. And this is going to take two arguments. The first argument is state. And the second argument is going to be action. And this is going to return a switch case. So we're going to say switch action dot type. And the first case is going to be action type. And this is going to be an enumerator that we're going to declare dot increment. And in this case, we're going to return count is going to be equal to state dot count plus one. So let's define this action type. So we're going to say enum action type. And we're going to have two properties on here, an increment and a decrement. And then before we do our switch case for decrementing, let's define our initial state. So we're going to say const initial date equals, and this is going to be an object. And the first property is going to be count. And we're going to initialize it as zero. So on state, we could say that this is equal to an object with a property of count that's a number. And that would work. That's a proper typing for state. But if we add a new property to our initial state, we're also going to need to add it to this object here. So we can just say type of initial state. And if we change the initial state object, that's going to be reflected in state down here. And we can also use action type to type our action. So this is going to be an object with one property of type, and it's going to be of type action type. So now we can type our case for action type dot decrement. So we can say case action type dot decrement. And this is going to return count is going to be equal to state dot count minus one. And if our action is neither of these, we're going to default to throwing an error. So now that we have our reducer and initial state complete, we can use our state and dispatch. So down below our list of items, we can print out our count. And this is going to be state dot count. And we can have one button for decrementing and another button for incrementing. So I'm just going to make the button a minus symbol and on click equals dispatch. And dispatch is going to take one argument and this is going to be an event. So I'm going to say type is equal to action type dot decrement. And this needs to return a new function. So I can copy this button, paste it down below. And in this action, I'm going to call dispatch action type dot increment. And you can see we have our count here and we can decrement it and we can increment it. And that's how to properly type use reducer. So the next thing we're going to look at is network requests. So I'm going to make a new file called three network dot TSX. And inside main.tsx, I'm going to render out my new network component. So I'm just going to make a new function here called app. And I'm going to export default app. And app is just going to return a h1 that's just going to say network requests. And of course, we need to import React from React. So to make a network request, we're going to install Axios. So I'm going to say yarn add Axios. Then I'm going to import Axios from Axios. And we're going to make a network request. And so we need to store the data from that network request somewhere. So I'm going to say const equals use state. And it's going to be initialized to an empty array. And this is just going to be called data. And we're going to call this set data.
So to make our network request, we're going to use effect. So we're going to say use effect. And use effect takes a callback and an array of dependencies. So there's only one correct way to fetch data inside use effect, and that is to create an async function called fetch data or whatever you want to call the function. So the incorrect way would be to say that the callback function is async, and then you could await the function here. But that is not correct. So I'm going to say const result equals await. I'm going to say axios.get. And we have this JSON placeholder API that's just going to return an array of users. So once this result has finished, I'm going to call dot then. And then I'm going to say result. And then I'm going to get the data off result. I'm going to say result dot data. And we just need to call our fetch data function. So let's do something with the result here. So we can set data to result. And let's print our data to the screen so we know that it's doing something. I'm going to make a fragment here. And I'm just going to json.stringify our data. So you can see here we now have an array of objects. So if we wanted to map through this data, we could call data.map, and we could say this is a user. And down here we could say user dot, but we don't know what properties are on this user. And I'm very lazy, so I don't want to type all these properties manually. So what I'm going to do is copy this, and I'm going to come over to this application here. It's called quicktype.io. And I'm going to paste my data into the input. And I'm going to get the interfaces for the data here. And you can use this for lots of different languages. So I'm going to copy those interfaces and I'm going to put them into my file like this. And I'm going to type my use state as user. So remember use state takes a generic and it's going to be an array of users. Now I can say user dot and I get all the properties on a user. So the last thing to show is context. And so for context, I'm going to be using this function here, but I'm going to be extracting the data fetching and the data out to context. So I'm going to copy network and I'm going to paste it and I'm just going to rename it for context. Then I'm going to render out context So if you're not familiar with React's context API, that's okay. I will try to explain it as simply as possible, but it's worth getting familiar with the API because it's very handy and it can make your code much nicer. So context basically has two parts to it. It has a provider and a consumer. And the provider does exactly what you think it would do. It provides the data and then the consumer consumes the data. And with React hooks, this API is really nice to use. So I'm going to create a new function and this is going to be called user context provider. And this is going to take children and we know how to type children. It's react dot react node. So let's return our children. And now we need to create our user context. So we'll say const user context is equal to create context, which comes from React. And inside here, we're going to pass in some initial values. So we're just gonna have users is equal to an empty array. Next, we're going to wrap our children in user context dot provider. And we need to close that. And inside user context dot provider, we need to pass in some values. And the value that we're expecting is going to be users. And we're just going to set this to an empty array for now. So let's move our 
use effect up to context. And we can change data to users and we'll change set data to set users. So now we can remove this empty array. And we're getting a type error here. So we need to come up to where we declare user context and we need to pass in a generic here. So we can create a new interface here and we'll call this context result. And context result is going to have users and this is going to be of type user and it's going to be an array. And then we can pass context result into create context. And you can see we're no longer getting an error here. So we need to create a consumer here for this. So we can say const use user context and it starts with use because this is a hook equals a function. And the function is going to return use context, which comes from react. And we're going to pass in our user context. So in your application, you'll want to export the use user context and the context provider. And you wouldn't want to put them in the same file as your actual component. So we'll export user context provider and use user context. So let's change app to a child component. And we can say const object equals use user context. And inside our object, we're going to get users. So we just need to change data to users. And we can remove the stringify. So we need to create a new app component. So I say function app. And I'm going to return. And this is going to be user context provider. And we need to close off user context provider. And this is now just going to return our child component. And you can see that our users are now being rendered here. So this is really nice because you can abstract all this logic out into a context provider. And that is how to use TypeScript with your React projects. If you liked the video, please make sure you subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.